Hello Ethical Hackers! In this video, we continue discovering Burp Suit extensions, and today we're going to discover how to leverage G2E Scan to discover and exploit Java based web application vulnerabilities, which you can find in so many targets because Java is widely used for enterprise scale projects. So let's get started. As usual, we will start with installing the extension. Java Enterprise Edition offers many API services and protocols which allow to create multi-layered applications at the enterprise scale. So we will typically find it in medium to large enterprises. And it has its share of vulnerabilities depending on its implementation. So for example, you have expression language injection, JBoss, CVEs, and other Java-related technologies. So this extension adds some tests focused on Java Enterprise Edition for Burp Scanner. So once it's installed, let's see if we can test it on WebGoat, because WebGoat is developed using Spring Boot, a Java framework. So make sure you have configured Foxy Proxy to talk to Burp Suit. If you don't know what WebGoat is or what Foxy Proxy is, make sure to watch the OWASP Top 10 playlist available in this channel, which covers all of this and many more. So let's go to Injection, for example, and maybe just go ahead and choose some pages. Let's do the same thing for other menus. And we have some requests recorded here in Burp. Let's go to target, sitemap, and then choose our IP address, which maps to WebGoat. Let's right click and then scan. And you'll see that we have a new scan job launched. So we don't see any results from Java Enterprise Edition scans. Let's see if we can test that on another application. A typical file which is found in Java Enterprise Edition web applications is webinfweb.xml file which typically hosts configuration of the web application. And we can use a Google Dorks to find those pages, which means that there's a higher chance that the target is running using Java. So we are using the in URL operator to look for web inf and then slash web.xml and we precise the extension to be XML. But it would be unethical to test those applications so I don't encourage anyone to go this way. Instead, we can write our own application, but this is time consuming and we don't necessarily have the skills to write a fully blown web application using Java Enterprise Edition. So let's see if we can find an already vulnerable web application. And we land on the first link, which is apparently a vulnerable Java application. And moreover, it uses Docker to spin up all the web application for us. So let's copy the link and clone that repository. And we simply git clone the URL. Let's go into the folder and you'll notice we have a docker compose.yaml file. We simply have to type docker compose and then up to spin up a new web application. I don't have docker running so let me just do that real quick. You can install Docker simply on Mac or Windows using the available desktop app. If you've already downloaded the OWASP Top 10 Lab, which comes with the OWASP Top 10 playlist, then you already know how to set up Docker Compose. All right, so now that we have Docker running, let's run Docker Compose. It will magically download and configure and run the application without having to do any manual work. Isn't that exciting? I will just go ahead and change the proxy options under the proxy options tabs. I will change the port from 80 to 8081 because the vulnerable web application we are spinning up is running on port 8080. Let's wait for a moment for the application to be available. In the meantime, let's configure our Foxy proxy. So we choose Burp suit 
and then we change the port to 8081 to reflect the new proxy port. And if everything goes well, you should see that the application is served on port 8080. And just like that, we have our application running without ever having to touch any web application which we don't have the right to test. So this is really important if you really want to be an ethical hacker. Let's choose Burp Proxy and then register a new account. And let's log in. And you'll see that it resembles quite a lot to WebGoat from the categories of vulnerabilities. If we go back to our targets and choose the new web application, you can see that we have a new item here, which says G2E scan information disclosure and the version of the Jetty server. And this is possible because the response contains a header which discloses the version of the server. Let's right click and then scan this request and right away you can see that G2E scan detects some vulnerabilities and one of them is struts RCE. The extension sent a content type with a well-known payload which in this case would instruct the web server to return a response which contains the header cross ACK and then whatever the result of this multiplication. And if we go to the response, we see that we indeed have such header. So this indicates that this is clearly vulnerable to remote code execution. Also, the extension successfully found this path. When we go to it, it returns the struts web console. And this means that the struts dev mode is enabled. And in the advisory tab, you can see that the development console allows the evaluation of object graph navigation language expressions, which can allow for remote code execution. We could try to run our own expressions like one plus one, but it doesn't seem to work. Anyways, let's go back to G2E extension and see what we got. We have the same information disclosure from what we've seen before about the JT web server. And if you recall from the last video, we have a vulnerable jQuery library found by the retired.js extension that we've seen before. So as you can see, adding such tests for a Java Enterprise Edition web application while you are testing allows you to find really important bugs by automatically testing for specific vulnerabilities. If you found this content helpful, make sure to like, comment and subscribe to this channel so that you get updates whenever I publish a new video on ethical hacking and bug bounty hunting. If you're new to hacking and want to learn the basics, Check out the free OWASP Top 10 Theory and Hands-on training on thehackerish.com and apply your knowledge on the lab which supports it. If you enjoy learning with videos, I invite you to watch the OWASP Top 10 YouTube playlist. However, I encourage you to first try to solve the lab exercises so that you don't spoil them. Don't forget that there are supporting blog posts for most of the videos you watch on this YouTube channel. I also encourage you to subscribe to the Friday newsletter on thehackerish.com to gain some new hacking knowledge at the end of the week. If you enjoy listening while doing other things at the same time, check out the Hack for Fun and Profit podcast, link in the description box. Until next time, stay curious, keep learning, and go find some bugs.